Mineral health is a very important challenge for us in Texas. When you talk about health, oftentimes oral health is completely left out. Even in 2000, a Surgeon General said, this is a national epidemic. It affects every one of us as individuals, as well as professionals working in the healthcare environment. People just don't understand how important oral health is to our entire lifespan. Tooth decay is the most common chronic childhood disease in children. When children have dental decay, it can lead to pain. So children aren't concentrating, um, they may have poor behavior, they are missing school. So all of those things basically equate to children aren't learning. I wanted to go over with you um, how to make sure you brush all of your teeth today. Would that be okay? All right. And I served a, a program in San Antonio. Uh, there was a young boy named Steven, and we kept trying to figure out, you know, what it is it? Why is he acting up? He's not eating. You know, he's real fussy. He's lethargic. We end up referring him out to a physician, who then, in turn, came back and said that he had pain uh, internally along his gum lines. And once we were able to service that family and provide him the treatment, you know, within some days' time, he was a totally different child. He improved in his test scores. He was more focused during circle time. All that because of oral health. A lot of times we hear from parents, well, they're just baby teeth and they'll fall out. But we know that that's not the case. Tooth decay can get very severe and can cause abscesses. And when um, that happens, the infection can actually spread to other parts of the body. And um, we have had situations where children actually die from a dental abscess. It's kind of one of those things I think sometimes we disconnect the head from the rest of the body and we don't think about it until something hurts. 86% of pregnant women don't visit a dentist while they're pregnant. And yet, at the time that you are pregnant, you're extremely vulnerable to gingivitis, gum disease, and that can impact the health of the baby. Sometimes it contributes to premature delivery, so you have a low birth weight baby or you have a baby born with an infection. Some of the challenges specifically are that we don't have adult Medicaid dental benefits. There's 164 million hours lost per year from adults that can't go to work because of dental pain. My name is Ramon Soto. I live in Austin, Texas. I'm I'm a mini blind installer. Basically, my job is pretty physical. When I have to climb on ladders or you know do do strenuous stuff, sometimes they would hurt, and I just would never see a dentist. I just figured take some aspirin or you know home remedy type stuff. And with my teeth hurting, I can't focus to the best of my ability on my task at hand. I think the major challenge is not having health insurance. So even if you do have insurance, the expenses are very high for the copay. I live check to check. I don't have money to be spending. I don't have money to, I don't have 250 to get a tooth taken out. I don't have 500 to get my teeth cleaned. I don't have it like that. There's no pain compared to a toothache. The biggest challenge has to do with the way our public health program is structured in Medicaid. If there are children in the program, they get good dental services. Once they hit age 22, it's like falling off the cliff. We estimate over 240,000 adults with disabilities in Medicaid are getting little or no dental services until such point it reaches what they call medical necessity. It means someone is in so much pain, they have to go to the emergency room to get uh, care, and usually it's in an operating room situation and it involves extractions. You know, I mean, how foolish is that? How foolish is that? My name is Judy Injo, and I have cerebral palsy. I can't really brush my teeth. My Medicaid does not for dinner at all. Not even routine checkups. The only way they will pay for it is if it's a dire emergency and I need to go to an ER. You shouldn't 
have to wait until it gets so bad you're in the emergency room. That's not right. One of the things we're seeing as our population ages in the United States, we have more people keeping their teeth. But the flip side of that is as people keep their teeth, that means they will also have some issues with dental decay or cavities. Between 2010 and 2060, our 85 year olds plus will increase three times. That's significant and we need to look at how we will address this oral health issue. In Texas, I think that if oral health care was added to Medicare benefits, it would make a world of a difference to our uh, elderly residents. A lot of people make the assumption that Medicare covers dental care, and it does not. In order to get dental care, you have to either have nothing, be totally indigent, you know, sold your house, spent down to $2,000, or you have lots of money. But if you're in the middle, it's very hard to get dental care. You know, it's all about quality of life at this stage. and. There's no quality of life if you can't eat. We know that the most effective way to prevent tooth decay is through good oral habits at home. But the problem is that a lot of people just don't have the information to know what to do. It's not something that we see parents tend to focus on, especially low-income families, when your biggest priority is budget, feeding, and making sure you have your basic needs met oral health tends to be on the bottom of that totem pole. And that's the type of thing that, that for me, really says we need to educate everybody about oral health. If we're going to improve oral health in Texas, we have to get everybody aware of the challenges and the issues and how we can go about improving oral health in Texas. ATOMA stands for Advancing the Oral Health Movement in Texas. This is a collaborative initiative between the Texas Health Institute and the Texas Oral Health Coalition, but it's really a statewide collaborative and an opportunity uh, to bring uh, different stakeholders uh, in oral health, public health, and the healthcare system to talk about uh, common issues that affect all of us. Our objective would be looking at how we can make a difference in various age categories of people in our state. We want more organizations to be a part of this initiative because different organizations have those different perspectives and expertise of defining the same problem and coming up with solutions in an innovative way. You can decide at whatever level you want to work in, but we need people to be able to communicate why oral health is important, that it's not just about pretty smiles, that it's about your health. So you have a role to play. The five work groups that we have are policy, representing the communities, the oral health equity work group, communication, academia, uh, and interprofessional collaboration, so that's directly affecting practice. There is a direct benefit that you get uh, in terms of using the collaborative work products and deliverables and designing it specifically or using it specifically for your organization and the populations that you work with. The peer opportunity to learn from each other and to have real life experiences and stories that can be shared is a really important part of educating people. When you can share those stories and there are Texans sharing with Texans uh, in their own communities, that begins to get people's attention. They begin to say, oh, that's not just a statistic that could happen to me. When anybody comes together for a certain goal, in this particular case, oral health, we are looking at the benefit of future generations. I want to invest in the community that we serve because we are investing in our future. The one word that I would use to describe this work is love. Challenging. An opportunity. Collaboration. Hopeful. My favorite quote is by Margaret Mead. She says, never doubt that a small group of thoughtful and committed people can change the world. Indeed, it's the only thing that ever has.